Hello and welcome to the ninth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering ray casting so we can't see our UI unless we're close to the door. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find the assets and the scripts to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So I briefly talked about raycasting at the end of last tutorial, and again, just to recap, what it essentially means is it gives us the ability to detect how far away any object is that we are currently looking at. So in effect, what we'll be doing is attaching a script to our player, which will be able to send out what is called a raycast, and it will send back a value to say we are this far away. We can then use that information to say if it's below a certain level, then we can do something. If it's not, then we don't do anything at all. So how exactly do we set all this up? Well, it's actually fairly simple, but it requires a script to interact with another script. What do I mean by that? Well, it means we have one script set up, which is always detecting how far we are away from something, and then another script can interact with that script to then come to an establishment of, is it below a certain distance? And if so, we can do whatever we want it to do. So let's go to our scripts folder. And in here, let's right click and create a new script. And we'll call this player casting. Let's open that up in Visual Studio. And the way it'll work, like I said, there is one simple way of making it send out a raycast that says, yep, we just need to get a value from this. And we're just going to use this raycast script to do that. We don't need it to do anything else, nothing fancy or anything like that. Just something simple. So where do we start with this? Well, we need two variables. At the moment, one of the variables is going to be known as a static variable, and that can be accessed from another script. Now, for debugging purposes, I'm also going to create another variable, which is going to be the exact same as that static variable. And you'll see why a little later on in this tutorial. So where do we start? Well, we don't need the start update, the, sorry, the start update, the start method. Um, but let's add in those two variables I spoke about. So public, static. And like I said, this is going to be reflected or in interacted with with other scripts. That's why it needs to be public and static. Uh, it needs to be a float because it could or it could be a decimal number, and chances are it more than likely will be a decimal number, especially if you want to get down into detail. Uh, we'll call this distance from target semicolon, and the target is going to be whatever game object we are currently looking at. Next. We're going to serialize field. And this one is also going to be a float. And we'll also have it as two target semicolon. So these two variables are going to be identified as exactly the same number. We just want to be able to see it. We don't necessarily need to have that two target variable in here. But like I say, I want to have it in here so as we can visually see things a little better. So. How do we get this to actually work? Well, firstly, inside the update method, we need to type ray cast hit, and we'll just call it hit, semicolon. It doesn't matter whether it's a capital H or lowercase h, it, it honestly doesn't matter. It's just a variable declaration. I suppose it would be more useful to have as a lowercase h, but however you want to do it. So we now need to say if, and in brackets, physics, dot raycast and open bracket we need to transform the position so transform dot position we need to set the direction of it forward so we can say transform dot transform direction and in brackets we need to use a vector 3 so we say vector three dot forward. And what this is basically doing is making sure that our raycast is going out forwards and ahead of us to make sure we are picking up the correct information. Uh, close bracket and then semicolon 
and then the word out, because we're giving an output here, hit. And this hit is going the same as this here. So what's happening is we are sending out the raycast and we are putting whatever value into that hit variable. Uh, once we've got that, it is a double close bracket and open curly bracket. And now in here, we're going to say to target equals hit dot distance semicolon. What this will do is this serialized field here to target, it will make that equal to whatever our raycast is outputting. So we can see that in the inspector panel, but it means that we cannot interact with that actual number in a different script. So what we also have to do is say distance from target is equal to to target semicolon and save. So if we head back into Unity now, give it a second just to compile, shouldn't take too long. Uh, we now then need to attach this script into our scene so as we have that raycasting being live and active whenever we move around in our scene. So, playcasting, let's go to our player capsule right here. And I'm just thinking, is that the best place to have it? Because we always want it to be looking at our camera. So if we look where our camera root is, right there, that has our main camera on. So really the ray casting has to be attached to the player camera root. So let's attach it to there. And let's press play. And let's have a look at this number here that says to target. And let's see what happens as we look around and move around. Hopefully we should see that number change. So, yep, there we go. You can see as I look around, it is indeed changing. So as I get closer to this wall, you can see that number going down. And you can see I am right up against the wall and we are right against our target. So our raycasting script is working as intended. Now, if we look at our door, it currently says open door, but our two target is 26 away. So realistically, we don't want that to appear to say open door until we're about here. So it currently is 4.88. So if we say we want the target to be around five before we can flash up this UI. Now, in order to do that, we need to modify the script that we had last tutorial. If you remember, it is the script that is attached to this door and it is called metal door. So let's go into the metal door script and let's modify the code in here to only work whenever we are five or less than five from the door. So where do we do this? Well, we have here void on mouse over and no matter what, no matter how far away, it brings this up. So let's insert an if statement here. So before we get to the UI controller action text, Let's have an if statement. If player casting dot distance from target is less than five, then open curly bracket, delete the close curly bracket and go to the last line of this method, hit return and then close curly bracket. So what's happening here Essentially, it is saying that if our distance from target is less than five, then we can display these. So let's save this for now. Head back into Unity once it's compiled. And the idea here is that we want to be like we were then 26 away from that door. Hopefully we shouldn't see anything on screen. And as we get closer, it should indeed pop up on screen. If it does, we know that we have the raycasting working exactly as we need it to. And there are other things that we have to kind of abide by within all of this as well. So we need to modify that script a bit further. And so far, so good. If I head over here and let's look at the door and it does not appear. Let's get closer to the door. Still doesn't appear. Right by the door. And there it is, it's appeared. Excellent. So if we 
now back away, you can see that we still have that there. And it will disappear only when we look away. But if we look back, it doesn't appear. So this is why we need to modify the script even further. So back into Metal Door, we need to put here that if player casting dot distance from target is less than five, then yep, we do that. However, if it is greater than five, we need to do the opposite. We need to do the equivalent of what on mouse exit is. So we need to put else open curly bracket, hit return, and then we can copy those lines of code and place them in there and save the script. So long story short, all that's happened here is we've created that script to say how far we are away from anything. If we're looking at our door and it's less than five, then yeah, it appears on screen. If it moves to more than five, it will disappear, even if we are still looking at our door. And if we're not looking at our door, it just disappears anyway. So now when we play this, everything should be working as intended. And if you do have any problems with these scripts, as always, they are in the pinned comment and in the description. If you head over there, click the link and you can get these for free. So you can see, yep, so far so good. As we get closer, there we go. Now let's back our way and we can't see anymore. Closer, back away. Closer, back away. And close again, move away. Perfect. Everything is working as intended with our Raycast. And it's not just the door that the Raycasting is going to be useful for. There's going to be many other things within the game that's going to be useful. Like, for example, when we have some collectible coins that we want to pick up, or a gun that we want to pick up, the Raycasting script can be used for that as well. It's global. It's generic. It doesn't just account for the door. We can use that Raycasting for anything within our game now. Uh, so next tutorial, what we'll cover is attempting to try and open this door, but it's locked. So we'll have like a new camera system and a sequence that says, um, like, it's, we can't get through the door. So next tutorial will be setting up that new camera system and the sequence. And then the tutorial after that will be a case of, uh, you know, text on screen and maybe some sound effects. So until that next tutorial, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every single tutorial in this series, and I will see you next time.